Roe versus Wade overturned mixed reactions from religious leaders. On June 26th, the U.S. Supreme Court voted to overturn Roe versus Wade, the landmark legislation holding back anti-abortion laws on the state level. Since the decision, the nation has been divided within the ranks of religious organizations. Sheila Katz, CEO of the National Council of Jewish Women, stated that the ruling is, quote, a violation of both Jewish law and tradition and American religious liberty. Nadia Mohajir, head of the Heart, Heart Women and Girls, said most Muslim Americans support access to abortion. On the other hand, the more politically powerful religious camps celebrated the court's decision as the completion of their spiritual journey. Tanya Britton, a Catholic and president of Pro-Life Mississippi, has spent decades traveling around the country pushing her anti-abortion agenda and saw the overturning of Roe as the accumulation of her work to prevent other women from committing quote-unquote murder as she had herself done as a teenager. Despite being a lifelong Catholic, President Joe Biden vowed to fight the court's ruling through legislation. Global reproductive and women's rights groups have condemned the U.S. Supreme Court's decision. The United Nations Population Fund, or UNFPA, the Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency of the United Nations, warned that, quote, overturning the constitutional right to an abortion will have far-reaching effects across the globe. Okay, I have, I am... I'm going to have a take that you might think is surprising of me to say. I don't know if I, after like seeing some reviews of this, okay. Oh boy. I mean, I am very much, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just pro-life. I'm, I'm pro, I'm sorry. I'm not just pro-choice. I'm pro-abortion. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I like abortion. I like, we should have more abortions. Okay. I think you have Um, the most extreme position on abortion out out of anyone I know. I know. So I know. no one, However, no one can question your credentials. <laughs> yes, true, true. Okay, I wish, I wish I could get pregnant so only so I could have an abortion. Okay, that's how much, that's how much I'm in favor of abortions. Okay, uh-huh. I'm, I'm sad that I missed that opportunity to have an abortion. I think it's a beautiful experience that everybody should go through at least once in their life. Okay. However, however, I do agree that. Roe versus Wade was not, it was a stretch to suggest that this is in the Constitution. Okay. So technically, the judges are correct. This is not the problem. I mean, the judges are correct. However, your Susie, your Constitution sucks. Okay. It's not the judges. It's not the judges' fault. Like, they're right that, dude, this is not. In the Constitution, this is not a right that you could find anywhere in the Constitution. The whole idea that the right to privacy would suggest that you have a right to do this is not there. This shows that the United States Constitution is out of date. It does not provide you with all the rights that the advanced modern country is supposed to be providing to its citizens. Okay, so that's that's my... That's my conclusion. That the judges were correct. This was the right overturning Roe versus Wade was the right decision. It's just you need a better constitution. It needs an upgrade. Well, um, no, I won't ask you that question because you're not a constitutional lawyer. Yeah, no, I think it's very interesting to hear the positions of people or lawyers who are fiercely pro-rights, pro-choice, pro-abortion, who still agree that the original Roe versus Wade ruling was bad law, a bad constitutional law. Um, And it's an argument that I find very interesting. And it's also an argument that I need to understand better. Um, Because what I've heard so far regarding that argument from extremely progressive people is actually very convincing. But... um, I don't have like the legal depth of knowledge to be able to present that back to our audience and explain that argument in depth. Right. My understanding of it is that the way that the 14th amendment was used in the original Roe versus Wade ruling had more to do with the doctor's right to practice than necessarily your right to secure this type of procedure. Um, which I thought was very interesting. Um, if you, ha- cause you were saying, oh, well you need a better constitution. 
I mean, given the fact that, you know, you're not a lawyer, Armin, could you enumerate, elucidate what that means to you? I mean, any, any constitution, I think, okay, I, again, I don't know, maybe we should talk to a, a constitutional lawyer, but I think any constitution that does not stop a government from telling a woman that it's illegal for you to do this, you know, to have a procedure that, you know, that you want to your body, I think it's a constitution that is not uh, limiting the government as much as it's needed. Mm. Right? If mm. a constitution, one of the purposes of a constitution is to limit the the powers of a government on what it can do to its citizens. And if a constitution is failing to this extent, where a government can come and like, you cannot have this medical procedure on your own body, okay? If a, mm. if a government is allowed to do that, that means that the, it's, a, it's not limiting enough. This is a this is a this is a constitution that is not limiting the government enough. That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, that that's a very interesting argument. Um, I understand where you're coming from. That, yeah. that I'm going to think about that a lot. That's very interesting. Um, so one thing that I find very interesting, I need to get new synonyms. The synonym, the word that seems to define me is interesting. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so do you want to talk about the split reactions from religious leaders across the country? Yes. Yes. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. So what do you think about people who are Jewish religious leaders, Muslim religious leaders in particular? These are some of the loudest I've seen who are saying that this is actually a violation of their religious freedom because okay. according to their religious tradition, when life begins is very different than Christian conceptions of it, specifically Catholic. I read a really interesting article today about how it's essentially Catholic ideas around abortions that have affected all of the evangelicals, but that's a different story. What, what do you think about this? All right. So first of all, I think that if a government had a proper constitution, no, um, then the idea of like, well, relig religious people saying like, where in our religious books, it says that would be like, only be responded to with pointing and laughter or like <laughs> it's so cute you think it matters okay but unfortunately we live in a world where it does matter <laughs> right so we have to be like okay well let's see what it says here um and and it, what it says it seems in almost every abrahamic religion including christianity is that there is nothing that limits abortion at least like early term abortion there's no limit limitations on that. In fact, there are instructions for it in all of them. In Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, there are like, here's how you do it, <laughs> right? So it's weird that like, I, and to me, it suggests that religion is so so flexible when it when it comes to deciding what it want to get, what it wants to get butthurt over, right? I guess I think there's more clarity on the in all of these religions on on it being anti-divorce than it's being anti-abortion but like divorce is completely legal and abortion is all of a sudden decided you know they have decided to i mean there are much greater sins for example in the bible than homosexuality right mm -hmm. homosexuality there's a lot more emphasis on so many other sins of like definite no-nos blaspheming right? like, against the holy spirit yeah or yeah or like having partners with yahweh and in, in, you know in so many so so like it's just pick and choosing like so religion is a meme that based on its political utility certain parts of it gets a lot of more attention and you know to the point of extreme you know obsession over mm -hmm. other parts okay but that's not a bug that's a feature of religion because it's a weapon that it's flexible like and it could be used as needed for political gain you know so so again if you think like this is stupid this is actually it's not that stupid it's actually genius right because this is not about fetuses okay this is about using fetuses as a way for you to um get power you know what i mean so you 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 know how how many people that are using this fetus protection uh, campaign 
as do you think they actually like lose sleep at night thinking about oh my god fetuses those poor fetuses they're dying somebody save the fetuses i don't think that's a, it's about that it's about main, thinking like this is this is mobilizing people to maintain the power over politics the, the power that they fight might think that they're afraid of that is slipping through their hands because of changing demographics okay they see the changing demographics they change seeing that people are changing their opinions about religion about conservatism and they are finding very clever ways about how to maintain power and control even though the demographics are in are, are not in their favor so yeah and hopefully hopefully if they manage to main, maintain control and power and also get control over the education system, maybe they could do something about changing the demographics moving against their favor. Yeah, right now I'm just thinking about how the Democrats are acting like they were caught with their pants down, which is so embarrassing considering that we had a historic leak of this decision and they had time to prepare. Like literally they should have come out for when this decision came down the way it did with like a 10 point plan of what they're going to do to assert, you know, the values of their constituents, right? And protect the Ooh. rights, the Democrats. They just act like oh, yeah. they have no idea what they're doing. There's zero clarity around what they are going to specifically do to protect, you know, the access to this reproductive service, reproductive health service. They're like, well, we might be doing this and we're looking into that. They had time to prepare. That's what makes this extra embarrassing. They should have had like a detailed roadmap of bullet points. Like we are going to hit this and this and this and this, and we're coming for them every step of the way. Like it just comes across as like, um, well, we're looking into something. What? <laughs> But that, I don't know if we want to get into that. That's something I've been thinking about. That's a whole different topic. Actually, it might be smart of them not to have a plan. Because in terms of, the, in terms of we can't have a plan because you need to vote for us to be like, this might be an opportunity for the Democrats as well, right? So the Democrats might be like, listen, we can't do shit. Okay, and if maybe if they did something, if like if they're like, hey, here's our plan, people are like, okay, good, please do that plan. I think the smart messaging for Democrats is like, no, 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 we can't do something, anything. You guys need to give us more power coming come in the elections. So, so they, oh, the Democrats is just so politically cynical and selfish. It really depresses me. It's politics, and in the meantime, right? it's causing massive resentment from people who are like, we worked so hard to vote you guys into the power that we have now. And now you just, I, oh, oh they, ah, yeah. the rage I feel towards the democratic establishment is flowing through my body and I can't even yeah. get it out. <laughs> See, Forever Stormy is agreeing with me, saying Democrats yeah. don't want to do anything because they want this as an election issue. They they are as cynical as Republicans. Well, I mean, that's a bit extreme. They're not as cynical as Republicans. Nobody is. Okay, know. Republicans are <laughs> like, I'm well, actually, I can't say that. That would be dehumanization. And so I wouldn't say that. YouTube might like it, not like it. But also, we should answer this because Bread of Life is asking. Our Christian supporter, Bread of Life, thank you so much for your support here. But if I say this every time because I am so proud to have Bread of Life as a, as a supporter. Okay, when we have people who are ideologically not in agreement with us and support us, I want to always mention that we have a Hindutva supporter or a Christian supporter. We don't yet have a Muslim supporter, okay? We need no, we a Muslim some. supporter. We definitely do. Really? I talk to them. Okay. No, like people that come here live on air and like yeah. talk to us. Oh, okay, cool. So highlight if, when we have Muslim supporters, like highlight them and identify that. Like tell people, brag about the fact that we have Muslim supporters. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, let, let's let's uh, ask, answer this question. Uh, Bread of Life is asking, as you understand it, what are the arguments for the pro-life position from a pro-life religious position or a pro-life secular position? Because they're very different, very different. So um, a pro-life secular position is usually coming from the position of pitching, um, using rhetoric of um, the, the right to life and coloring it in human rights rhetoric. 
And so pitching this new thing as a right to life, that's a lot of how they use their messaging. Um, a, a Catholic perspective more comes from the sense of you are uh, interfering with God's perfect plan. You are committing murder. You're committing a murder and sacrilege against God's perfect design. Um, and not only is murder already a sin, but you, yeah, like I said, you're interfering with God's design, his perfect plan. He wanted you to have this baby. It's against God's will. And that he chose that this life to begin at conception that he, you know, dictated and ordained. Um, or at least that was in, imbued into me throughout my lifetime in a Catholic community. Armin, do you want to answer this? I think it all comes down to them saying fetus lives matter. And I'm my position is, left, is that fetus lives don't matter at all. That's what basically it, right? Um, I think we, as, uh, yeah, they're not self-aware, so screw them. They could die as much as you want. Yeah? That's, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like they're fetuses. God damn. When you put it's it just, that way, you're armed. <laughs> they're just fetuses, okay? You do whatever you like. I personally don't like the fetus lives so bad or rhetoric. I don't think it's useful, but I understand why you say that. Um, yeah. But that's, you know, my personal just like preference. Um, when crazy. there's some really good live chat um comments we should make um forever stormy oh. no forever stormy Sorry. is saying we should also not use other religions as a way to go after this decision because then they will start carving out exemptions for themselves and then as an indian citizen she's saying hello personal laws for those who are not aware in india's civil penal code there are basically different rules for different religious communities which causes a lot of problems in the country but there's a historical reason why it happened but nowadays i think it's outdated and i think india needs one law for all i'm a big supporter of the uniform civil yeah no unified civil code anyways i like this idea <laughs> can you read it i like it. I want why are you gonna to make read me it. read this i guess you have to read it the door not in bed is saying Armin is going to push for a fetus stomping day. Yes. Does that violate YouTube's terms of service? Because if it doesn't, then I would. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to resign fine. myself to a corner. Um, and that oxymoron is saying, I am more leaning towards letting abortion be legal until the age of fetal viability. That's basically what I'm comfortable with. Um, except when it comes to like, okay, so if, if it's legal until the age of fetal viability, then what do you do when people do it afterwards? Like basically asking me, okay, well, how do you want people to be punished for this then? And then I don't know how to actually answer that question. Um, I definitely wouldn't do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's complicated. What is this one? I don't understand this one. Are this? Um, Nanda is saying Armin wants to appease women, wants more, one more chance. So supporting, oh, right to abort. They're basically saying that you're white knighting. Mm. You know what? Screw women. Okay. This is not about them. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. Because I hate the idea of women saying my body, my choice. Like, yeah, that's dumb. No, rhetoric. no, no. Okay. If the fetus was self-aware, then it wouldn't be your body, your choice. Okay. Because there's another body, you idiot. Okay. It's like my body. I'm like, have you forgotten about the body that is not your body that is inside you? Okay. You dumb idiot. Okay. So this is my, <laughs> my idea of supporting abortion is not that, Hey, respect the woman's rights to choose. Okay. My idea is like, who gives a crap about fetuses? Okay. I am more anti-fetus than pro-woman, okay? This is not about being pro-woman. This is about my war against fetuses. My personal <laughs> vendetta against fetuses. <laughs> okay. Guys, this is why you come to Atheist Republic, because <laughs> you do not get this kind of take from other atheist creators. That's for sure. <laughs> and this is not about women, you dumb idiots. <laughs> We are starting off the show hot today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so. Oh, somebody's saying, I mean, you were also a fetus once. Yeah, but I'm not anymore. Okay. 
So, yeah. I mean, guys, you were also like, I don't know. You were so many things before. We, you used to be poop. Did you know that? Every single you used to be poop that plants ate upon. Okay. So do you like, you want to save poop now? Okay. Yeah. Do you know that? <laughs> Saying, screw women, screw fetuses. Armin is on a bender today. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.